Hi, I'm Sarah Wiltenberg. And I'm Christopher Trice. Stay tuned. Inside GRCC is coming up next. Welcome to Inside GRCC, your look inside your community college. There's a lot happening that we're proud of, including... Including, GRCC has a new green roof on top of the Applied Technology Center. And we're offering more classes than ever in Holland. And we're about to become a tobacco-free campus. And we're remodeling a home using environmentally friendly materials, and much more. Let's start by taking a look at that green roof. The Applied Technology Center has been needing a new roof for quite some time, and GRCC thanks to the support of the Steelcase Foundation, has been able to make that roof green. How did we do that? Well, let's let our facility staff explain. We are outside level two of the Applied Technology Center here at Grand Rapids Community College. It's located on Fountain Street, just before you get up the hill to Heritage Hill. And behind us, we have 18,000 square feet of vegetated roof. The vegetated roof is a roofing system whereby on top of the pre-existing roof, in this case we have a rubber EPDM roof, we have a layer of growing medium or soil with plant life on top of that. In this case, it's sedum, excuse me, which is a low-growing, creeping plant that is well suited to this environment, both in terms of heat tolerance, drought tolerance, etc. It's a succulent plant. It's non-native to Michigan, but it works particularly well in this type of application where it can be very hot in the summer, cold in the winter, a lot of wind and snow. It still can thrive and uh, multiply and, and fill in even more than it has already. There are a number of benefits of a green roof. For example, uh, it increases the insulation of the roofing system itself, increases the R value, so we will see a decrease in our energy costs. It uh, manages stormwater, so in a typical rain event, we will retain 100% of the stormwater that hits this roof. We were fortunate that there's a local company in Spring Lake called Live Roof, who we feel has, is on the leading edge of this uh, industry, of the green roof industry. And what they do is they grow these sedums at their facility in Spring Lake in trays. They are one foot by two foot trays and they plant them from clippings and they grow them and nurture them for 12 to 16 weeks in Spring Lake so that by the time they show up here they are 95 percent fully vegetated. They truck them from Spring Lake. This 18,000 square feet was dozens of semis and the scale of this install really was hard to imagine unless you saw it because uh, you would picture maybe this could be installed in a day but rather it took them the better part of a week and dozens of trucks um, to bring it out here. They ran them on conveyors across the top of the roof, set them in place. You can see the semblance of a pattern. There actually are three different varieties up here. We have a dark green, a light green, and a purple, as they fill in, this uh, line between the light and the dark green will become more noticeable. The green roof viewing platform will be open whenever the building is open. So during the day when class is in session, folks will be, will be able to come out here and view the green roof. 
uh, look at the signage and learn about how the green roof works. Also in the evenings when we have evening classes or weekends when there are events. The only time we'll lock it down is when, there are, when the building is not open. So nights and weekends, if there are no events, it'll be locked down. But otherwise, it's open and available, staff, students, general public, visitors. To learn more about GRCC's efforts around sustainability, visit grcc.edu. Our commitment to sustainability is reflected in our course offerings as well. GRCC's Building Trades program is preparing students for construction jobs where making wise environmental choices is required. You've probably heard about building new homes with these techniques, but we're showing that you can remodel one as well. Hi, my name is Keith Ferguson with Grand Rapids Community College. I'm an instructor that teaches the construction remodeling program located at the Tassel M Tech Center. What you see behind me is a home that may seem like it doesn't need a lot of remodeling work to it. Yet any home has the potential to be brought up to environmentally friendly standards. We're going to reside the home using a recycled content siding and we're also going to replace the windows using low E thermal pane glass. The roof will be left intact. We'd like to add gutters and downspouts and run the rain runoff into a rain garden, uh, thus leaving or eliminating the potential of running water into the city sewer system. In a moment, we'll take a walk inside and we can show you some of the other features and modifications that we'll do to this beautiful home. Before we go in the home, I'd like to take a moment to discuss some of the vegetation that you see outside here. Our goal is to take the vegetation here currently and to replace it with drought tolerant plants, uh, grass seed that's drought tolerant. Again, you don't have a big use of watering. Uh, keeping the water bill low is our important thing, plus we're not bringing water out of Lake Michigan. Uh, the plants that you see here, will be removed. Uh, they'll be taken away from the foundation, creating a possibility of rot as it retains the moisture. And the grass that you see in the back will also be a drought tolerant plant. So our whole goal is to be as drought tolerant as we can, to take the rainwater through our gutters and downspouts to run that into a rain garden, thus leaving the, the water here instead of putting it out in the street and into the storm system and then out into Lake Michigan. We're trying to retain as much of the natural water that we have here to use in this, this facility, or this place, and not use as much city water. The first thing we'll be doing is getting rid of this beautiful red paint. But let's take a walk upstairs and I'll show you the kitchen and some of the other areas that we'll be dealing with. Welcome to the inside. As you can see, we'll start here in the kitchen. The cabinetry that you see here will be removed and also the countertops and recycled. In its place will be new cabinetry put in using no formaldehyde glues. Also the laminate countertops will be made of uh, recycled components with no VOC glues. Uh, the appliances, there's only a stove here now, but the appliances will be Energy Star appliances. Very energy efficient. The plumbing fixtures and all the fixtures in the homes will be uh, energy reducing fixtures, thus saving water. As I said earlier, the windows will be replaced. The windows uh, currently in here don't meet the standards for energy efficiency. The new windows will have a low E coating. The double pane windows will be argon filled gas. Thus, they'll be energy efficient and providing a savings to the homeowner. If we'd like, let's take a walk back here to the bathroom and I'll show you some of the other features that we'll be doing in this home. Let's start here with the, the laboratory. Uh, the cabinetry again will be recycled and a no formaldehyde glued cabinetry will be installed. New countertops, also the fixtures will be a low energy reducing fixture. The toilets will be a 1.3 gallon per flush toilet. And also, on the shower head, we'll use a water reducing shower head, thus reducing the need for a lot of water and saving the customer and our environment uh, our precious resource. Uh, light bulbs will be compact fluorescent light bulbs, another energy saving. Also, the venting will be updated. Here in the bedroom, uh, same thing as the other rooms. We're going to take out the windows, put in a high performance window. The walls will be painted with a low VOC paint, and also any caulks used in the home will be low VOC. Uh, that brings up another point to the process that it's important to collaborate with all of your subcontractors to make sure that your plumbers use a low VOC glue, uh, the painters are using low VOC caulks, and the students are using low VOC paints. It's imperative that we maintain the indoor air quality. Uh, on the floor, as we mentioned earlier, the carpet will be removed and replaced uh, with a green or a corn silk carpet, and the current carpet will be recycled. Um, 
This is one of the rooms. We have another room located next door. Again, it'll be the same process. We bring the interior, interior air quality up, we recycle and replace with uh, ecological friendly products. At this point, let's take a walk downstairs and we'll see what we're going to do down there in terms of our heating and cooling system, and water heater, and then also some improvements from what the home was built originally to bring it up to a LEED standard. Hi, welcome to the basement of this home. It's an important room to show you because you can see what the house used to look like before these modifications were done. What our class is going to do is we're going to build a 2x4 stud wall, use blown cellulose to insulate it, and then drywall it. This wall was done the same, but if you can hear, it's hollow behind. The importance is that we need to do the same thing as we're going to do in this room. We're going to stud this wall, use a blown cellulose, we're going to make this more energy efficient instead of just having drywall over the existing foundation. If you can see up in this area here, you can see that a cellulose was blown in originally, which is great for ecological friendly, but the rim joist has no insulation value at all. What we're going to do is use a formaldehyde free foam on the rim joist to bring that up to a high performance standard, and this room will then be very well insulated and should be very comfortable. At this point, if we'd like, let's take a walk over to the furnace room. We can talk about some of the modification and adaptations that we're going to use, again, to make this home a very ecological friendly home. Welcome to the mechanical room of this home. From first appearances, I, you're probably wondering why are they going to replace this furnace and this hot water tank when they look brand new? The problem lies in it's an open combustion chambered, low efficiency. It's an 80% furnace. Same with the hot water tank. You can see that they both vent out. What we'd like to replace in here, what we're going to replace in here, is a 90% or a closed chamber combustion system. The furnace will be high efficiency. The hot water tank will be a power vented, high efficient hot water tank or possibly an on-demand hot water system. Again, all geared towards using the efficient uh, resources that we have, saving the homeowner energy and durability in the future. Uh, the smoke detector, which was here currently, all in the house, but this one here uh, will be replaced with carbon dioxide smoke detector combination units, which again is a lead standard. Um, and you can see the repair will be done to the makeup air that comes from the outside. Again, left in disarray. And uh, currently we're hooked up for a washer and dryer, which will be nice. This will have to be made into a single lever uh, system where you can turn the hot water on and off at the same time. Again, a lead standard. Um, if you'd like, let's take a walk over to this bedroom. We'll show you another uh, area of the house that we'll be working on. As you can see, this is one of the last bedrooms of the home that we have not been into, but it's the same scenario as what we had before. Carpet will be replaced and recycled and replaced. Hollow walls, two by four studded walls will be put in its place with a blown cellulose. The ledge, which is a very nice feature in any room, will be replaced with, again, uh, no formaldehyde, probably a corn silk uh, plywood. Um, the fixtures will be updated, uh, again, with a compact fluorescent bulb. Any doors will be repaired. You can see this is kind of falling off the hinge here. And paints, caulks in this room will be all low VOC paints. And uh, this room will be actually very nice once we get done with this. So if you'd like, let's take a walk over here. We'll show you the other bathroom that's located in the home and tell you a couple more features of what we'll do to bring this home up to the lead for home standards. This is the other bathroom that's in the home. Uh, part of the sustainability is trying to use what you currently have at the home. Uh, as you can see, the tub is a new tub that's been put in. The modifications we'll do is we will add a paperless drywall around the top, which is a lead standard. Uh, currently, the bathroom has no ventilation. Ventilation will be added. Uh, 1.3 gallon per flush toilet will be added, and also a water reducing fixture. Thus, you know, more energy efficient, more ecological friendly, and bringing it up to the lead for home standard. Any remodeling project, I won't say poses problems, but it poses some opportunities, and we have to be creative. One thing that we'll be doing is adding, adding an energy efficient recovery system. We'll be adding that centrally located here in the ceiling. And another important point to note is that any drywall that's removed from this project will be recycled and then spread on farm fields, which is uh, the final resting place for any recycled drywall. So again, the home will be done up to lead for home standards. Uh, it'll be energy efficient, a sustainable process for the homeowner in the future. It'll be a durable building, and most importantly, it'll be a high performance home. So the class is really exciting to take this home, to take what's been given to us. It was built on an old uh, parking lot. We can get in, remodel the home from the standard it is, make it a high performance home. And in reality, any home can be remodeled to these standards. We're trying to seek a, a silver standard for this. We're right around the corner from a gold with a few modifications. I see no reason why the GRCC construction remodeling class 
can't get that gold standard. So thank you for your time today and we appreciate it. Again, to learn more about sustainability or building trades, visit us online at grcc.edu. Another thing that's changing about our campus environment is the air. As of November 20th, GRCC will be a smoke-free and tobacco-free campus. To explain how this policy came about, we spoke to Cynthia Springer, Vice President of Organizational Development. Well, the history regarding the uh, tobacco-free um, initiative here at Grammar Community College started back in October of last year. Um, the college was required to um, uh, be in compliance with the Clean Indoor Act Ordinance. And that ordinance um, required that the college uh, have no, no smoking within any of its buildings and within 10 feet of any doors and entrances. And DRCC announced the compliance to the college campus and we got feedback from our students and from our faculty and staff um, asking the question, why isn't GRCC smoke free? That question was very interesting. Uh, we got resolution and support enough that the president decided to put together a team comprised of the executive leadership and also the wellness team. And uh, we set forth to do some research around the question. And uh, that research included things like benchmarks, best practices uh, of other institutions that were doing smoke-free campuses. And also we brought in an expert who would help to advise us in terms of successes that local hospitals had um, entertained as well. And uh, we proposed that question to our Board of Trustees and in June of this year, um, they unanimously voted to um, support the initiative to make GRCC a tobacco-free environment. So the initiative that we are underway currently is to implement a smoke-free campus effective November 20th of this year, which is the Great America Smokeout Day. You know, key to our mission um, that we are an educational institution is that we pro provide a healthy work environment um, to increase productivity of our employees. And also, our students are going to be entering workplaces where smoke-free campuses may become much more of the norm. So we believe that it is our mission to provide those learning opportunities around smoking cessation and um, have uh, given um, opportunities for employees and students to take control of their health. Um, and also, we believe that it is a fiscal responsibility of the college to make sure that we are spending college dollars wisely, and there's quite an investment involved in making sure that the grounds are kept up to date, clean, and uh, make sure those ashtrays are um, you know, taken care of for our grounds as well. Well, our tobacco-free policy is really a part of our wellness initiative, and uh, our uh, main framework for the wellness initiative is education. And although we do have two tiers around the enforcement, sanction is the third tier. The two tiers that we are going to primarily emphasize is around education, and we're going to make sure that there are enough classes and workshops to support those that are seeking to um, stop smoking, and also for um, those that want to uh, participate in classes so that they're more educated about the topic itself. The second tier is around supportive services, so we are going to provide resources in the community um, so that individuals can take advantage of those as well. Uh, we want this to be a, a program that all of our employees take full advantage of, and so we're going to have cards that we're going to give employees. So as you are walking the campuses, and you might uh, notice that someone is unaware of our smoke-free campus initiative, we will have cards so that conversation between yourself and someone else is much easier by just passing the card along to them, reminding them that they're on the campus and it is a smoke-free environment. Since June, um, actually July, when we got the go-ahead from the Board of Trustees, um, our communications department have put posters all across campus. We have a new website that's up and running, so that if there's information or material that you need regarding the tobacco-free environment, um, that is also available to you on our website. Um, and so our marketing efforts are really geared between now and November 20th to raise awareness and make sure that the information is out there to everyone. And yes, there's a website to explain this policy, grcc.edu backslash tobacco free. Every semester, more and more students from Ottawa County need the classes that GRCC offers. To meet that need, GRCC has gradually been expanding options in and around Holland. First there was the Thompson M-Tech, then classes at Grand Valley's Meyer campus, and soon classes in partnership with Jubilee Jobs at the former Holland High School. making
seeing so much happen here. There's neighborhood revitalization, there are entrepreneurial opportunities, there is vital activity that's occurring right here at one of the city's busiest intersections. I said to my students, study hard, achieve, work, get great grades. A collaboration, a coming together, a synergy of activity around this space that would make a difference in the life and the activity of Holland, Michigan. Learn more about our Lakeshore offerings at grcc.edu backslash lakeshore. GRCC staff is a very generous bunch, and at an event this summer, they proved it by running just as fast as they could, in a benefit called the Get Running Charity Classic. Staff raised thousands of dollars in support of St. John's Home. Staff will be doing this every year, so if you work for GRCC and want to get involved, visit our wellness team webpage at GRCC. The second week of the academic year is our welcome week on campus. Here's a look at some of the fun events that got students going this fall.
We'll leave you now with one last look at how that green roof came together. Over the course of a week, thousands upon thousands of plants were put into place, and we have the time-lapse video to prove it. Thanks for watching.